morning everybody, Bean Chill here and we're back at it again. Uh, we just took down the VR6 so I am very very intrigued on what's actually wrong with this engine and we're going to find out today. So as always, we're here at Bean Chill's garage, that's going to break, we're going to fix, we're going to repeat. Have a wonderful day and let's roll that sweet intro. channel if you go to my community tab page really quick guys vote on what's actually might be wrong with this because I'm very very curious what is actually wrong with this engine um, so I ruled out the transmission um, I thought the transmission might have been locking it up because sometimes if these fail if the pressure plate fails uh, it can lock up the engine um, no no pressure plates fine um, so that one option is ruled out. So next option is, do we have number one, uh, failed chains? Number two, timing is off. Number three, the pistons actually seized in the block. Uh, number four, we got a bent valve and the valve kept the engine locked up, which has happened before. Um, pretty much those are the four options that I currently can think of that can cause this engine from actually not spin um, so from here we're gonna pretty much take everything off slowly we're gonna show you guys what is being taken off and what we're gonna keep and what we're not going to keep there's not much stuff to keep on this engine um, we are gonna be converting a lot of stuff on here from what it has to what it won't have uh, meaning what we're going to keep and what we're not going to keep on this engine for number one optimizing cooling number two cleaning the engine bay number three simplicity for maintenance and repair on this car um, there's a lot of stuff you can remove off and off of this engine that is no longer needed um, now be forewarned everyone everything we're going to remove will affect emissions um, if you have emissions uh, regulations in your state please don't do this um, this will cause you to fail uh, for all you other guys who don't have legal or emissions required in your state by all means go for it and let's have some fun and clean up those engine bays because we want to make this a very very sexy engine and uh, pretty much sexy overall look of the car so um, let's get ready and let's uh let's get to work so first things first, what we're going to end up doing is removing all the exterior portions. Now everything that we remove, we're going to have to tag and bag because um, there's a lot more extra hardware on these engines versus a 1.8T. So uh, there's more bolts that need to go in very, very specific locations. They specifically have a certain length. Um, they go on a very specific orientation. Uh, once removed they cannot go back um, so we have to be very very careful I mean then mean not that they can't go back once removed you have to make sure they go back in the same location um, because again they affect things and they're only a certain length for specific things um, so when we take off this portion up in front um, just make sure you label it same one over here in, in the front here down below with the SAI um, your sensors, your accessories. Um, when we take off the short runner portion of the intake manifold, uh, the fuel injectors, that rail that sits above the fuel injectors, um, those are going to have all specific bolts. 
uh, if we come down over here to the front of the actual engine we got all these accessories and pulleys that need to be removed as well so we have to make sure we take our time and remove these properly without causing any damage and obviously again labeling them uh, anything that does get damaged make sure you remember when you take them apart um, or label them that it's damaged so when you remember to replace that with new parts uh, right now right off the bat this is actually damaged uh, the the main bracket for mounting the VR is damaged uh, right off the bat as well I'm gonna need a new tensioner um, all the other pulleys I mean we can probably get them cleaned up and get them working again um, so it's not crazy crazy bad um, again, I'm really excited to see what's causing this engine not turn. So every time we remove a whole layer of stuff, we're going to try to crank the engine again and see if that prevented it from uh, locking up. Um, just keep going and going until we find out an actual reason for it. So we're here now. Now we're going to take off pretty much what is the front. So we're going to take off the injectors and the fuel rail first. Um, to do that, we need to get these out, right here, oh, well I broke it <laughs> already, they ain't even trying and it broke, so the main fuel lines right here have a two little clips on clip, and then there's one, two, three, four, Allen, and I believe you have to use the number five for these, yep, five millimeter Allen. Now there's a cool little trick that I've discovered to make a little breaker bar for your Allen wrench. 10 millimeter Allen wrench and then that. And with an extension. Once you have sockets and that's a different story, just use your sockets. And you guys can see I'm already bagging, tagging and bagging everything that we pull off this car. All the injectors should pop right off with it, so it should be a pretty straightforward removal. Okay, almost lost that. Three, four, yeah. You might need us to pry them all off. We'll find out in just a moment. So, what we ended up doing is taking off the injector rail clips, I mean, the fuel injector clips, these little guys with the little flathead. Pretty much you uh, unclip them, all six of them, and then you can pull the rail off. Uh, that's going to give you access to these uh, one, two, three, four, five, six bolts here. Uh, these bolts are going to hold pretty much this part of the manifold for you. So the next step is I'm going to clear out this side because uh, I can't take off the uh, intake manifold until I get the engine on a better stand or bases so I might as well wait and I'll work on the back side right here so we got the ignition coil which is one two three four bolts uh, we got the water secondary water pump mount and then we got our coolant flange right here as well and these use the same allen bit uh, which is right here which is a five Take these four off. Mm. 
Jeez, this has been in there for a minute. So these four bolts are going to come off and they're going to come off with this line. Um, with the ignition coil. Just like that. So remember how this goes in and the orientation because it's very important. Um, the next step is the secondary water pump. And that's held together by 10, three 10 millimeter bolts here. Yep, that's it, just those three 10 mil. And then you have a fully exposed timing cover right here. This is the actual timing cover of your engine. So that's uh, really neat because we're gonna use that to do the inspection uh, and to see if that was the cause of the failure. Later down the tear down on this. Now, as I work, uh, again, if you guys love what I do and follow my channel, hit the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. Uh, that's super important to actually know because if you don't hit that notification bell, you'll never know when we actually have a new video or when we go live. And we go live pretty often, so you guys won't get that no notification if you don't hit that bell for us, all right? And if you really love what we do here at Pinch House Garage, I also recommend uh, becoming a Patreon member because uh, this will help fund all future and current content. See how crazy long these bolts are? So this is the uh, water flange, or coolant flange. Right here. Whoa, now that's, that's bad. Look at that. That's insane. I don't know what that is. I've never seen. I've never seen this build up before. I would say it's mud. So it could be oil and coolant, but I don't think it is. It doesn't have a smell to it. Very, very interesting. So what I just took off was the coolant flange pipe, and if you guys can see right here, that's known as the crack pipe. It's a uh, common uh, hose that actually fails, or a pipe that fails very, very often on these cars, and a very, very quick and easy upgrade for these pipes is get the aluminum ones, and then they will never fail on you again. Now with the 10 millimeter ratchet. I'm going to get these three off. And again, keep them all together. That way you know what belongs where. And then start tagging and bagging. Simple as that. That way you don't lose stuff. Especially when you start putting things back together. Um, very, very important. Like the sensor. That's a knock sensor. Interesting. So this whole side of the engine is now 
gone. Um, the next step is to work on the back side. The exhaust manifold is chilling and the mounts for the uh, engine cover there or the intake manifold are there as well. Those will have to come off as well. So we're going to work on that side. Um, maybe next we'll see what's over here. Let's turn this guy around. Actually we can do the accessories because these are right here and they're really really quick and easy to do. 13 millimeter, take the antenna off. Uh, 16, 16 for the motor mount uh, bracket, and then as you go there, uh, I would definitely dump some WD over here down here and start soaking these parts because those are probably going to be pretty bad uh, to remove. Um, so this engine's been not very well taken care of that I thought it was, but it's okay. That's what makes it exciting. Is that oil? Sounds crunchy. That's gross. That belt was seized on there for sure. It hasn't moved in a long time. Oh wow, look at this. I don't know what this is. Is that belt? I don't know what that is. Hey babe. So what I ended up doing is soaking up the alternator and all other stuff with WD. Grab a chisel and a rubber mallet, not a metal mallet, a rubber one and just give it a couple taps to help it slide forward like that and then wiggle it back and forth and then get that sucker out of the way and that'll give you access to the next uh, accessory um, these are the alternator bolts the next accessory is your AC condenser I mean your uh, yeah, your condenser or AC pump, whatever you guys want to call it. Um, these use, I believe, 16. Yep. So I get your 16 mil, an extension. don't have a Phillips use your I mean flathead screwdriver get a big flathead screwdriver and do the same thing pry then you gotta give it like a back and forth wiggle shimmy like that that pulls that guy out and then power steering pump it's kind of the more of the pain of the three to remove so you're gonna need to lift the engine up for this one. <sighs> so 
So let's get that engine lifted and then we'll show you what to do next. Now that we have the engine up in the air, we can have a little bit cleaner view of what's going on here. That belt is, there you go. Belt is grody. So we need our 16 to remove this bracket. And this is the motor mount bracket. This is where the motor mount actually attaches to the engine and then from the engine to the chassis. So to get your accessory bracket off, the main accessory bracket, we have to remove the uh, power steering pump right here down below. And to do that you need a screwdriver here to lock this in place, uh, keep it from turning, just like that. That's all we want to do, so that way you can break loose these three bolts right here, uh, these three uh, Allens, and then I'll show you what to do next. All right, so. We got all three broken loose. The way the reason why you need these three removed is so you can get to the bolts behind it. So you can get to these two one, two, three bolts right there that hold that sucker in place which are 13s and you got one two three four five just for the power steering pump which is impressive and the reason why you need those to take those off is so you get to the uh, accessory accessory bracket that's held by like another eight bolts So by the judge of this, this thing had a really, really bad oil leak. And not in one spot. It looks like it was leaking everywhere oil, like badly. Because the grime on this thing is insane. So I'm really, really curious on how was this car maintained over its life. I mean, because the engine bay... I meant the engine bay, but I mean the interior of this car is almost perfect. It's scary. I mean the owner took really, really good care of it inside, but I don't think he took that much care outside of it, meaning the engine and stuff like that. I mean I could be very wrong, but I'm just going by what I look like. Uh, what I'm not what I look like, but what this looks like. steering and all the bolts for that keep them together so now we got the accessory bracket to remove and then we'll work our way over to the SAI pump or the secondary injection 
And the oil cooler is right there, oil filter, that all has to come out. Um, and then the crack pipe, you guys can see a good, have a good view of it now, there it is. Um, so that has to come out. Once all of this is removed, um, we'll get the uh, engine on a, on a dolly and strap it down, get some good strong wood on it, strap it down. That way I can take the intake manifold out, or the second half of the intake manifold out. Um, probably work on the clutch, flywheel, get the exhaust side removed. Um, get all the little accessories over here taken out. And then that should be it. And looking at this, this was removed at once in its life. The, the big washer that goes on here is missing. Very interesting. I wonder what happened to this engine. Very, very curious. It's got rust in areas that I didn't know you can even get rust in. Like on the belt, on these pulleys, very, very odd. Um, it's got this weird, weird residue. I don't know what, it smells like burnt, but I don't see anything burnt on here. It's again, it's just so weird. So very, very weird. So, um, yeah, let's get back to work. So on our next step here, our next ordeal is getting this sucker out secondary air injection and not damaging anything on the way out even though I don't want this we're not going to use it in our build we have to make sure we can take it out without doing any crazy damage That was easy. Look at that. That legitimately just held, was held on by a clip. Easiest secondary air injection removal ever. And then, this is the combi valve, if you guys can see that. That's the combi valve. It's held by one bolt right there. And that bolt and then this bracket right here is a necessary bracket to hold your engine. So, to get that bracket out, and to remove the runner, uh, you have to have the engine on the ground. So, yeah. Yeah, but it's looking more and more like a bare bone VR. Look at that. This is insane. I don't know what this is from. Look at this grind. Look at this. It shows that there's leaks, but from where, I don't know. That's the question, like, this is leaking really bad here. This over here was leaking really bad, see that? It's very interesting what was, what was wrong with this engine. So I'm hopefully when we get further and further into it, more and more shall be revealed to us the mystery of the VR6. Next step is to remove the water pump. What's cool about these cars, the water pump, about these engines, the water pump is actually separate and doing the maintenance on them is quite easy if you don't get an, 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 an annoying one like I just did. <sighs> but 
it came and broke loose, so that's all that matters. These AutoZone Allen wrenches are amazing, by the way. They work for me so well in comparison to other stuff that I've used before. I'm very impressed with the quality with these. And they flex like crazy and they don't snap or bend. So I'm really, really happy with this set of wrenches. So this water pump is held by three, three bolts. That's it, just three. Why don't you come in out? And you pry that sucker off. There we go. Sucker seized up in there. Look at that. Look how much cor corrosion, man. Well, looking at the coolant, though, I don't see. I see metal flakes in it though. See some glitter in there. So that's not a good sign. But I don't see oil in the coolant. So we know the head gasket's still holding on a positive note. That the head gasket's still doing its job. So that again is positive uh, for no bad head gasket. Maybe. I mean, it's not a bad, uh, depend, I mean, what depends on where it failed, but that's where we're at right there. So, pump is off. All we're down is just to the crank pulley on this side. Uh, we need the runner for that, and then the exhaust manifold, and then we're done. So, we're going to take off the exhaust manifold, this little uh, axle cover, and then the manifold. But the manifold I can only take off until I put the engine on the ground. Oh, excuse me, on the ground. Uh, I gotta take this stuff off down here, the smog stuff. Uh, oil cooler, oil filter housing, how all, all that has to come out. All this is gonna be replaced. We're gonna make sure all that's brand new for you guys when we build that. And then, um, honestly, I'm probably gonna shoot this with the power power washer. Uh, once I get everything taken apart, I'm just gonna shoot it with some power wash. Some purple power and just clean up the the way the engine the engine looks. This thing's grody, man. Because I don't want to put this in my car to go get it, you know, hot tanked and whatnot. As it is, so I'm gonna do that down the road or later today. So yeah, it's not much left to tear down. So the next one is to remove the oil filter housing. Uh, it's just three bolts, three thirteens.
gross. The little ball that was down here, the little vacuum reservoir, that's held by a five millimeter, two five millimeter Allen bolts. Oh, got some oil in there. Make a mess. So let's take these off and this one off. Let's see if we can get ah, this little clip off right here. Hold on. There you go. Um, this goes on top of that. It's nasty, so Where? just dump it on the on top of the oil catch thing. Flip it around, turn it around, and put it lay it down inside there. There you go. That's what you want. Drain that sucker. All right. Huh? It's okay. Um, yeah, we're gonna need some more. Uh, um, yeah, may, maybe. I don't know. So for this one, next right here, we get to our big, big crescent wrench, and you're gonna take this sucker off. <laughs> and honestly, I don't know why they did it this way. Whatevs. Uh, oil. Can you get that catch can and bring it over here? Put it underneath the engine. Ooh, ooh, ooh. hurry, 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 hurry. Hurry. Underneath, underneath, underneath. Thank you. Whatever that is. Oil. That's not oil. Oh, that's just grime. You'll live. That is. It's love. VR6 love. So yeah, there. <laughs> so there's a third. Uh, so that sucker again. You use your big old crescent wrench, and you take that off, and then um, then you have a five millimeter here and a thirteen here. Uh, I know this is a crank sensor. I th this is a knock sensor. I think that's what this is right here, because of where it's located. Um, cause I found the other knock sensor somewhere over here without, I think that's the cam sensor. I don't know. Trash. Trash, yeah. So, we'll figure it all out in the process. And replace everything that needs to be replaced. Which is almost everything. <laughs> so it's going to be a fun build, for sure. So we took the, I named this one the, uh, front crank sensor, I mean knock sensor, this is the crank sensor, this is the oil cooler housing, this is the oil filter housing uh, mounts here. We have the crack pipe, the water pump, uh, the accessory bracket we took off, uh, the SAI, you have to maintain the bracket here. More than likely what I'm going to do is cut this portion off and clean that up. I'll probably get it powder coated, make it look good, give it a nice little powder coating. Get that whole bracket look pretty. Um, this bracket here is what holds the wiring for your fuel, and then this one goes for your ignition. So we'll have to see if we can reuse it or try to do a different, go a different route to make it look nicer. Um, but I know for a fact I have to maintain this bracket just for for the sake of uh, being able to put the engine back in the car. Uh, let's see what else we got over here. Um, so we took everything off on this side. We took off the ignition coil, the secondary water pump, the coolant flange that goes right here. 
Um, that all came off. Uh, there's a sensor here. I believe this is the cam sensor because that's a cam right there. I'm looking right at a cam. So that should be a cam sensor. Um, we haven't removed anything from the back yet. And then from here, this is the front of the engine. So the water pump. We took off the uh, alternator, AC, power steering. Uh, all came off. So that's all removed. Next thing right here in the back. In the back we have uh, the exhaust manifold, the axle cover, and that's pretty much it for the back. Um, we have this bracket here. This bracket holds the intake manifold. So we got to make sure we retain that and not lose it. Um, this is the rear heater hose with all this spaghetti of uh, stuff. We're going to figure out how to bypass a lot of this stuff, guys. We're going to be making a lot of our own stuff to make sure everything works correctly. But, again, bypassing it because we don't need the nine, like 80% of this stuff anymore. So, we got the engine off the hoist. You guys can see that I no longer have it on the hoist. So, I put some extra 2x4s down here and then I put a 2x4 to run across it. That way it doesn't tilt that way because this is the, actually what's funny. The front of it is actually the heaviest area. Um, so, what we're going to do is we're going to remove this exhaust manifold. It uses a 12. Yep, lots of baggies. Um, so we already pulled one of the exhaust studs out, <laughs> which wasn't supposed to come out, but it happens. I mean, it's an old car. Yeah, don't don't pack them though. We need the yeah. Both of those came out. They're not supposed to. No, not broken. It's just. Pull the threads out, that's all. Can you tell them to label their baggies? Yes, tag them and bag them. That's what we call it. So we're going to get this manifold out. Is this rust? Yeah, but it's because it's cast iron. So this comes out. Then you have your gasket here. And then we gotta put these back on. Very important that you put these back on because you need them to hold the engine. Yeah. I know it's kind of floppy, but it's better than nothing. No, there's safe spot to hook it. That sounds good for us. Hmm? That sounds good for us. What? Open size. It does actually. <laughs> I agree. I know. So the exhaust manifold has been removed. I kept the bracket here just to be safe. We need the um, intake manifold bracket to come off uh, with it now. Very important. That one uses a six. And it's really hot today. That too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this one now we're gonna remove this is the remember guys this is super important bracket. This bracket holds the intake manifold in place. Um, so don't lose the bolts or anything like this. So there's a whole kit for that, so we're gonna show you how to do that in a little no, bit. No, no, not yet. No. So we're done with this backside. I just gotta get this hose removed uh, nicely. Even though I'm not keeping it, I'm just I need to keep it for reference. for reference. Um, 
But that's pretty much it. It's not gonna be used uh, again. Can you pull it? Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't pull. I'm not, I'm Watch your hand. No. No, just there you go. Yank it out now, it should come out. Perfect. So this is the backside completely emptied out. Exhaust manifolds, intake manifold, um, mount, rear hose or heater hose removed, uh, lower what's it called? Um, oh my gosh. Axle bracket removed. Um, and that's pretty much it that sits in the back. We now got to finish up on the front and then we're done tearing this whole thing apart. Uh, we're going to try to crank the engine over again um, with everything removed to see if we can crank it. If not, we're going to pull the head off. No, we're going to pull the valve cover off and then see if we see anything that's odd there. And then we're going to take the timing cover off over here and figure that out as well. So. Uh, that's going to be for the next video. I'm going to show you guys the, how to remove the intake manifold. And then from there, we're going to, on the next video, we're going to show you guys what failed on this engine. So next, I'm pulling these injectors out like this because I don't care. We're going to get new injectors for this car. But I'm just showing you guys. Oh my god, the engine's going to fall. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'll be right back. So again, don't do it this way. To pull the injectors out that's a bad thing to do but again we don't care because we're not reusing these injectors so I'm not really caring much for that but I have to remove the injectors to get to these bolts right here for the intake manifold uh, the, the shorter part and that just broke okay so so we need two 10 millimeters and then everything else is a six mil uh, Allen for that So right now I'm removing the intake manifold brackets. Um, I mean the this bracket right here. Uh, you need to save the two bolts for that, so you can put that bracket back on once the manifold is out. So retain this bracket here because you're going to need it to keep the engine on a hoist. And then everything else can come off with it. So after all the bolts were removed, we took off the intake manifold. So now you can see the entire engine in its entirety now, like completely. This is just a long block, as I guess if you want to call it. We still got a flywheel there, but it's still considered a, a long block uh, engine now. Now we're going to give it a crank over. But before we do that, we're going to mount this back. This one goes here because we need a safety blanket. Thank you. 
All right, so you want to jack it up a little bit, tighten, make sure it's tightened down. So that right there, everybody, is pretty much how you tear down a 1.8T, I mean, a VR6, um, down to a long block. So the next time you see us, the next video is actually going to be, um, I think that's it, that's it, that's it. Uh, the next video that you're going to see is us finding out what's actually wrong with it. Uh, we wanted just to show you right now how to tear down this whole entire uh, motor to get it ready for the machine shop, ready for cl cleaning, all that fun stuff. So, yeah, a lot of grime. Uh, so that's what I wanted to show you guys today. Uh, the next video, again, as like I said, it's, it's going to be all tearing. We're going to separate the head and everything, and then do an inspection inside the block. What's really really cool about these, the head bolts are right here. They're all front and back, and then we gotta take the valve cover off and show you to do the rest. But it's pretty cool. Uh, so we're gonna see what actually is wrong now. Uh, so I'll talk to you guys later, and peace out, and have a wonderful day. And thanks for watching Pinchiao's Garage. Peace out, everyone.